happy Friday, ladies. This video is by request from my girl, Miss Alexis Miller, who just this morning said, hey, can we talk about finding the right shade of nude shoe? You know, the one that makes our leg look longer, slimmer, sexier, and like eight miles long. The one you put on with your skirt or dresses, look in the mirror and go, boom, bam. Alexis, yes, we can, my dear. That is what we're doing today. Finding the right shade of nude for your skin type can be kind of hit and miss. If you've ever bought what you thought was a great basic nude shoe, put it on your foot, looked in the mirror and thought, why does it look so good on everybody else but not on me? It is not you. It's a matter of identifying and nailing down the right shade for you. First, let's define the concept of a nude shoe. Nude shoes are meant to create the illusion of an extension of your leg. And in order to do this, they should very closely match your own skin tone. Start by identifying your specific skin undertone. This can be warm, cool, or neutral. Warm undertones have have a yellow or a goldeny bronzy undertone, while cool tones have more of a bluish pinky undertone to them. Neutral undertones, which is what I am, are a combination of warm and cool tones. Next, think about how you plan to wear your nude shoe. When I look for a nude shoe, and I know I'm going to be wearing them with tanned legs, I always ensure that my legs are tan first before I'm trying them on so I can get the best match to my skin tone. If, like me, you've purchased a ton of what you thought were nude neutral shoes, but they don't necessarily look seamless on your leg. That doesn't mean that they don't work for you. All that it means is that the nude shoe operates more as a color and not the nude seamless look. For example, see this pretty shoe? I love the color, but this on me is gonna operate more as exactly what it looks like, like a tobacco brown. But if you're somebody like a Rihanna or what's her name? Beyonce, something like this is probably gonna be operate more as a nude on your skin tone. This, also super cute. If you're very, very fair, on me, it just looks like a light colored latte. I can still wear it, but I need to know that it isn't going to be a seamless look for me. The undertone, let me tell you what I'm talking about. Notice that these are both nudes. This one has more of a pinky undertone. This has more of a bluish undertone. This one I always reach for when I wanna be tall. Like these are so high, I'm like literally five foot five when I wear them, just saying. The second invaluable benefit of a nude shoe, you guys, is that it literally goes with everything. When in doubt, grab the nude shoe. And the other thing that I love about it is that when you're wearing an outfit that has a lot of texture, a lot of holler, the nude shoe acts as a backdrop and doesn't draw attention away from whatever your outfit is. If you look at the red carpet, sure, every once in a while there will be a pop of color, but the general rule of thumb for a lot of celebrities, and you guys, this isn't saying that they have any greater style than we do, but remember that a lot of those people have access to the top stylists who help them to look their very best. Take best practices from ideas that you like and implement them into your own life. Now, a lot of you have asked about a metallic shoe. Is that a neutral? Yes, it can be with the same rule of thumb. Stand by. Metallics also have a cool or a warm undertone. For example, this Ruthie Davis is a warm undertone, almost kind of poppery metallic, whereas this, aren't these cute, you guys? Look, it's got a little diamond. Who are these? Roger Vivier. These are gold. This is definitely a very warm undertone. Which one do you think looks best on my skin tone? The gold still looks okay. It looks pretty, but it definitely operates as more of a color. When choosing a good... Shoot. Damn. <laughs> So the general rule of thumb on really any shoe is that the high ankle strap is usually not flattering on many people because the ankle strap cuts off your leg. It interrupts that seamless visual that we want. That's why those gladiator sandals look so sexy on the models. But when you get them, you're like, okay, if I wear a gladiator sandal like that, I look like Miss Piggy with dental floss wrapped around sausage. It's not attractive. 
you can get away with an ankle strap if the strap is a metallic that blends with your skin tone or a perfect nude color that goes with your skin tone. You're gonna have a seamless look, so the eye isn't going to be interrupted. If there's a pair of shoes that you're like, I love those, but it has an ankle strap, you can get away with it if it blends with your skin tone. If it doesn't, unless you have legs like, you know, Giselle, it's probably not gonna be as flattering. And for me, I've learned to just skip it. Okay, let's look at the difference between white and nude. Everybody loves the idea of a beautiful white summery shoe, and so do I. So say I'm wearing this cute little sundress. How cute is this? It's new. I'll put the link for this below too. Do I think it might look really cute with white espadrille flat? Sure. But what ends up happening, I'm probably gonna end up wearing it with this little nude flat because it's going to be much more flattering on my leg. The attention is going to be on the lace, on the pretty white flat flowy dress and less distraction on, oh geez, that's a stark white shoe with that dress. It's going to look more flattering. Candidly, I bought these last year and I've worn them one time because I always end up going back to the nude. We always know what looks best on us, ladies. It's usually your visceral response. When you look in the mirror and go, ooh, that's pretty, it probably looks really good on you. If you look at it and you hemming and hawing and you have to ask your friend if it looks good, it probably doesn't. That's what I've learned. So with all of the nude shoe selections that I have for you underneath in the video description, you guys, I always choose items from stores that have very, very good return policies because I want you to be able to get things into your home, try them on in the comfort of your own bathroom. And if you don't like it, you can send it back. Finally, I've been asked the best style of nude shoe to get. That really just depends on your own lifestyle. You guys, at this age, we know ourselves well enough to know what we will wear and what we won't. I personally know I will never wear a ballet flat. I just don't particularly like them. I'll wear a platform. The most universally flattering styles on most every woman are as follows. A strappy heel or sandal heel with a low vamp or barely there straps. A traditional pump is also very flattering, again, because there is nothing distracting from the visual line. Also, a pointy toe will tend to be more flattering and more lengthening as well. If you love the idea of a heel or a sandal with a strap, look for a strap that takes a dip. That is gonna be much more flattering than one that hits smack around the ankle in almost like a um, horizontal fashion. You want one that takes a bit of a dip because again, it's going to give you more of that visual long line that we're looking for. So I'm gonna put a number of different selections for cool, warm, and neutral undertones in the video description down below so that you can go peruse on your own and find the best new shoe that works for you and your lifestyle. Okay, y'all, as always, I love hearing from you. You can never ask too many questions. You can never comment too much. It is always a pleasure to hear from you. And until a couple days from now, I'll see y'all soon. Bye. We can cry when it's over.